A very clever function in Excel, or should we really say another very clever function in Excel, because a lot of them are very clever, is the one called indirect. Now what the indirect function will allow us to do is effectively convert a piece of text that looks like a cell reference into an actual cell reference, so that we can then use it in a formula. If we take the indirect working file, we'll be able to see what I mean. So here on the top left, we have some cell references, J5, H4, and I2. And in theory, you would hope that you could say equals that cell there, but it only repeats the value of that cell there. What I actually wanted to do is take the J5, understand it as a cell reference, and go and find the value in J5, which would be 67. Now, in order to do that, so effectively to tell Excel to convert what it's seeing into a cell reference, if it is a logical cell reference, you couldn't just put anything in. You couldn't put ZZZ35 Z, Z, million because that's not an actual cell reference. So then you would get an error. But if it is an actual cell reference, then all we need to do to convert it into a cell reference for Excel to understand is to use the indirect function. So indirect, open brackets. It takes two parameters, one compulsory, which is the cell or the function that contains the calculation that works out your cell reference. In our case, it's going to be a simple cell reference, which is that one there. And then an optional parameter, which we'll explore shortly. If we leave things without that parameter, then it understands cell references in the format letter number. Indirect gives me 67. So it looks at B3, interprets the contents of B3 as a cell reference, and then goes and looks at that cell. So we could do exactly the same for H4 equals indirect. Whatever's in that cell, H4 tells me there's eight in there. So H4, there is eight in there. Now it's just a normal function. So I can replicate it down this column to here. And it tells me that I2, I2 contains the value 23. Very clever. Now it can get even cleverer than that. We can use it to interpret a range. So I have here from I2 to I5, from J2 to J5. What I firstly need to do is effectively concatenate a string that looks like a range. So if I say equal the value in there, concatenate the colon in between, they would need to be within speech marks because I want the actual colon, so literally a colon, and then the second value. That returns I2 colon I15, which we now can interpret as a range, but Excel cannot interpret as a range until we tell it to change that actual text into a range if it makes sense as a range. Well, it does, I2 to I5 does make sense. So let's place that formula inside our indirect function and Excel will then understand that as a range. We then get hash value because although it's understanding it as a range, it doesn't know what to do with that range. It's okay when we use indirect of a single cell, it says, okay, I'll just give you the value of that cell. But if we try to just do equals a range, Excel wouldn't know what to do with it. So when you pass a range into the indirect, it will then interpret that as a range, but then we need to do something to that range. Well, how about we just sum it? So equal sum, and then don't forget to close your brackets, and then return. And the sum of the result of these two being concatenated together with a colon in between is the range I2 to I5, and it thinks that's 174. I2 to I5 is in fact 174. So we can replicate that down, and it will do exactly the same for J2 to J5. It takes the J2, adds a colon, adds the J5, using the indirect function, interprets that then as a range, and then we add that up. So J2 to J5 does add up to 128. Now we're looking quite clever with this little indirect function, but it doesn't have to have text values that interpret as a string. We could use named ranges. Now this little table here does have three ranges within it. Apple happens to be the apple cells, banana happens to be the banana cells, and pear happens to be the pear cells. So I can come down here and say equals sum, open brackets, indirect, open brackets, of the contents of that cell there. So it goes to B13, finds out what the value is. The indirect function then says, okay, let's see if we can interpret that value as a range. So even though it's not I2 to I5, it's actually a word. If that word can be interpreted as a range, as it can here, because it's a named range, then it can go ahead and do something with it. So we close the indirect function, we close the sum function, and it then tells me that bananas add up to 152. If I then replicate this function down, that should be looking at pears, and it is, that should be looking at apples, and it is. If I just add these columns up quickly, 
we should see the numbers match 152, 174 and 128. So it is a clever function. Now it has one last little cleverness to demonstrate and that is down here. Perhaps we don't know the actual cell reference. Perhaps we're working with a few formulas, perhaps we're using the offset formula and we know where we want to go but we don't know where we were so we can't work out the actual cell reference. If that's the case you can reference within the indirect by the row number and the column number. That way you can calculate these by moving from another cell. So if we only have the row number and the column number, how does the indirect work then? Well, we say equal indirect as normal. We then have to build a string, which is R for row and the row number, then a C for column and the column number, and then the comma. So this first bit here is concatenating to give me R and a number for the row number, C and a number for the column number with no spaces anywhere in that string. What I then need to do is set the optional parameter here at the end to false so that it uses the row number column number style. Now by default it goes to true which means it's using cell reference style. But now we want to use row number column number, return, we get the value which is in row 6, column 8. Well, row 6 is easy to find, column 8 not so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 5, 2, 1, 5, 2 it is. If we replicate this down, this is now looking at R, so row 6, column 9. 6, 9, 174, 174 it is. And then it's now looking at row 7, row 7, column 10. Well, there's nothing in there, so I get returned a 0. So the indirect function very clever function, interprets some text value that you pass into it as a cell reference or a range reference. If it's able to make that interpretation, then it will then pass that into whatever function you're then using. So in this case, we use the sum. If it's single cell reference, then you can just go straight with an equals or a plus or a minus. But usually we use the indirect to interpret a range or a cell and then pass that into another function.